Hey, and welcome back to another video in the TNL Tips series, focusing on brief ways that you can be effective in your online teaching, particularly within our Canvas LMS system. So today, let's talk about the value of doing pre and post surveys in your class, and also what these look like in terms of Canvas, how you set them up in your modules, and also through the quizzes option. I think they're a really great way at the beginning and the end of the class to really incorporate a survey to see what your students know coming into the class, what some of the challenges they might experience are, and at the end of the quarter, what they liked about the class and suggestions for the future. It's a really great way to check in with your students to see how they're doing and where they're coming from at the beginning and then tips they have for you at the end of the class. So let's jump on the Canvas now and take a look at pre and post surveys. Okay, so let's discuss how you might use surveys in your class. Now, I wanted to mention that some people like using things like SurveyMonkey for surveys. If you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. There are many places around the web, even for free, that you can create a survey. I like using the Canvas tools because I think it's already available. It's inside your class. You don't have to worry about limitations on questions. SurveyMonkey with a basic account limits you to 10 questions so and, and so forth. So as a result of that, I think it's a lot easier if you use something within Canvas. So I'm using this quarter. I believe I have three surveys. Let me just make sure on that. Yep, a mid-course survey, a final survey. Um, this is actually sample stuff, not part of my class. End of class survey for finals week, and then at the beginning, an opening survey. So let me show you what these look like, and then we'll close with how you can create one under the quizzes tab here in Canvas. So the idea behind these surveys really is to get students to say, here's what I'm worried about in the class, here's how I'm doing, here are my recommendations for you at the end of the quarter after I've taken the class. Very basic, right? At the beginning of cultural anthropology, I'm feeling confident, anxious, or in the middle. To be successful in the class, I should, and then you could check all that apply here. Some students will check everything. And then one idea I have about staying focused in the class is, and they'll give you some uh, advice. The idea behind these for the first two, for the week one and the midterm survey, is to really alter maybe your perspectives on the class. You're getting feedback from students. Maybe you need to adapt because a lot of students are anxious about the course. And if they are, you could ask them, well, where do you think you'll need help? Will it be with theoretical terms, the readings, the writing, and so forth? You can really then start to customize and adapt in real time during the quarter, as opposed to figuring out a certain approach bombed or didn't work well and a lot of students got low grades on a particular assessment at the end of the term versus doing it more proactively as we're moving along during the class. So that's the opening survey. And again, it's ungraded, so it won't be anything that it will grade students on. And um, I think the feedback hopefully will be really good. I'm, I'm really upping this this quarter because I feel like I need more of this, particularly with COVID and now the fires and everything going on in the world. You know, there's going to be a lot of stress. So hopefully I can help um, understand the sources of stress and anxiety and, and adapt. This is my mid-course survey, week five during a normal term class of 11 or 12 weeks. So once again, it's very short and it's ungraded. This is all your information here, and we're really going to uh, hone in on this in a second. You have to have this selected for a survey. You could have a graded survey, but I don't see the point of that really. And I wouldn't want a time limit. I wouldn't want to shuffle answers. Again, this is for information, providing it to me, not for grading concepts in the class. So once again, I have three questions. At this point, I'm feeling good. I should make improvements. I'm concerned. I can improve in the following areas. Check all that apply. So if I'm discovering that, let's say 75% of students have challenges with quizzes, I can maybe do a review prior to the next quiz, or I can you know, focus on improving the discussions and intervening a little bit more if students are struggling with discussions. And then right here, um, what is one area I can improve in? And if someone is really happy with their progress, and I'm not going to you know, correlate this with their current grade in the class at the midterm, but they could leave that blank. So another opportunity to give qualitative information and then a couple quantitative questions. And let's look at the last one. So for this particular one, it's the only one that I'm not going to use to adapt the current class. So what I mean by that is I will use it the next time around. So end of class survey is asking them, Again, no time limit, ungraded survey. You've taken this class. 
What are some suggestions for the future? I'll try to keep this really brief because if you keep it short, kind of social science would tell us, you know, there's a real issue with response rate with surveys. Believe me, when I've conducted surveys doing research, I've been so frustrated at times like getting a 2% response rate, which is kind of worthless <laughs> for, for doing a survey. So I've had huge challenges with that in my research life. And for the purposes of a class survey, I want to keep it really brief. I did more or less about what I anticipated in terms of the work in the class. It gives me a sense of people's honesty and what did they really think. And then two questions. One thing I enjoyed in the class, written response. One thing I might change in the class, leave blank if you don't want anything changed. And they'll say, hit submit on the quiz. So what's nice about this is it'll really allow me to do assessments at three points in the class. The beginning to kind of prep for the first weeks through, let's say, weeks one through five. Then midterm through the end of the course, make some adjustments if necessary. And then the final survey, which takes place again at the very end, is for the next time that I teach a class. So that's kind of the rhyme and reason behind the surveys. Let me show you very briefly. They're easy to do. How to set one up. Maybe it's not intuitive, but you'll want to do this under your quizzes tab. That's where you have to do it. And I actually like creating, I think, let me check this out. Did I create that header or did it automatically do it? Let's try it. We're going to make a fourth quiz. Uh, by the way, you can now do the uh, either engine, the new quizzes or the classic quizzes. I recently um, added that uh, for you. If you wanted to do that, I enable that. Um, here in, in Canvas so you can use the new quiz format. So this is where you really need to work on the type of quiz. So scroll down to here and click either graded or ungraded survey. Again, I don't see the point of a graded survey, but you might just to give students some points for completion. Actually, I could see that. I would leave shuffle answers, time limit, submissions anonymous, multiple attempts. I would just leave all that blank. And uh, there aren't really going to be correct answers, so it's not a big deal. And again, if you have a particular time, go ahead and do the time here and the dates as you would on a normal quiz. And then you could title it something like survey. Let's title it survey four. And I really don't want to do, well, let me just see if I save and publish it, if it will actually um, let me do it here. Let's, let's just try it and see if it's blank. It might not like it. Okay, so there'll be a preview and there'll be nothing, of course, in the survey. So let me just go back to my quizzes. I wanted to see mainly if it categorized it for me. It did indeed. Okay, so I didn't create this category. I kind of forgot about that. And I'll just go ahead and delete that. But it's nice that it puts the surveys all in one spot. So that is really it on doing surveys. I gave you kind of the purposes behind surveys in my classes, the three surveys, and I showed you how to do them. And again, use the quiz tab to create a survey and just make sure when you do that new quiz that you don't make the mistake of clicking on a quiz. Uh, it could kind of mess things up. Make sure you either do the graded or ungraded survey. Again, ungraded is what I do, but graded, if you want students to get some bonus points for extra credit, that could be a great opportunity to incentivize surveys in your class. That is it today here, uh, looking at pre and post surveys in our TNL Tips video series. I'll be back with additional videos in the future.